Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the tutorial series. In the last episode we have explained a little bit about things. This episode we will explain the uh, properties of things, their effects and also the building section because I remember that I forgot to mention it in the last episode. So let's immediately begin. So, buildings. Well, buildings are actually things you can buy and sell which increases or lowers their amount and their effects and costs are scaled by this amount and a building can be clicked to purchase one of it. Uh, however, keyboard shortcuts can be used to bulk buy and sell the building. So here we have uh, the shortcuts listed. Shift click for bulk buying 50, control click for selling one and control shift click for bulk selling 50. Now a building's effects only kick in when you have at least one of it and a building doesn't necessarily have to produce only resources, they can be used in many different ways. Here I have listed some interesting ways in which a building can be used. For example, uh, a building can check for some condition every second, they can also boost other things based on amount, they could maybe use chance effects to grant an upgrade or other buildings or even achievements, or they could also be used to automate special processes when certain criteria are met. You can also make other things cheaper based on amount or my favorite which I've also used this in one of my games is they can be used as a game system where you start with one of the building but is hidden from the player and uh, this game system building quote unquote would do special processes every second and of course so on. There are really infinite possibilities as to in which way you can use a building. So yeah, that should be the building section covered. We can move on to properties. So how do we assign properties or effects to a thing? Well, properties are assigned below a thing key or the identifier. So I have made this diagram again uh, where we have the building section here. This is also a snippet from our code. Here we have our thing key or our identifier, which is the metal detector, and below that thing key are our properties. So for example, we have our name property and our description property, and here we could also add uh, different effects and properties as well. So let's now talk a little bit about general properties. So general properties were mentioned in the last video, and uh, let me remind you that they are available to all types of things. So, general properties, these should be all of them, I believe, is also the thing key that we have explained in the last video, but uh, there are also uh, several others. I won't really be explaining every single one of them because, well, this would be a pr pretty long video then, but they are pretty well explained inside the handbook, so you should really check it out. I have linked this handbook chapter in the description so you can read more about it. Now, uh, we have tags, costs, also requirements. This is a very interesting property you should definitely read about. We will definitely be using the requirement property in this course. Uh, now CSS classes, you don't exactly need to know uh, what they do. We'll explain of course in a future episode a little bit about CSS classes. Yeah, check the handbook of course and we can move on to unique properties. So unique properties were also mentioned in the last video and basically each type of thing has its own unique properties. For example, buildings have their own unique properties, upgrades have their own unique properties, buttons have their own unique properties. However, there are too many of these unique properties to list in uh, my presentation. So you should refer to the handbook to learn more about each one. And some properties are unlisted. Uh, I'm not sure if there are more than this, but so far only one has been discovered, or maybe more, I can't really remember. But this limit here is very useful as well. So the limit is used for buildings as a limit to how many of a building or how much of a building you can buy. And X can also be an expression. So this can be pretty interesting because, for example, you can have an upgrade, increase the limit of the building that you can buy, or you could maybe increase this limit based on a type of resource you own. So I will go into the handbook and tell you a little bit about how to read about these unique properties. Okay, so I am in the Idle Game Maker handbook right now and let's show you a little bit about what I mean by basically how to read about these properties. So we have mentioned general properties as well. Uh, that's here, right here. Mm, I have also linked this in the description. You should really read about all of these since uh, they are very useful. For example, I mentioned the requirement properties, uh, one of the most important ones, and definitely so. That is a bit of a longer description, but that's fine. 
but now let's move on to unique properties. So for example here we have the button section of the handbook and here we have the unique properties of buttons. So we can do show clicks and keep in mind that these uh, properties in brackets can actually be used uh, as sort of expressions in other sections of your code as well. Now here we have resources as well, their unique properties can be negative for example is always uh, some kind of number. Uh, you can also show earned which will uh, display its earned amount in the resources tooltip, show max, think he earned, max, production speed. This is actually uh, pretty pretty useful because you can use this to show production info in a buildings description. And here we can see buildings, no buy, show max, think he max. Yeah basically pretty interesting stuff. Shinies have a lot as well. And yeah, definitely read about them and make sure to experiment because, well, there are a lot of things that you might not expect, but yeah, experiment and read about these. Alright, let's move on to effects now. <clears throat> now, effects are actually quite juicy and also a bit uh, more complicated, at least when we're going to be moving on to custom effects, but don't worry, I will try my best to explain it the best I can. So, effects are used by things to produce resources, generate items, change prices, boost production, and basically do all kinds of different stuff based on conditions. Now, an effect can be declared in one line, like we see here. For example, you can append this to a button, and each time you click it, it will yield you one chocolate. Or on multiple lines if your effects are more complex and this is also known as an effect block. So for example here we can see that if you click, uh, if you append this to something and you click it, uh, it will yield you one chocolate and if you have uh, for example a magic chocolate upgrade which you would create in the upgrade section it would yield you three cocoa sparkles and there's also a one in one thousand chance to yield some kind of rare resource, a rare cocoa pot for example. And of course you must notice this end at the end of the effect block because multi-line effect blocks should always end well with an end. So you can also define multiple of the same effect in which case they will all stack sequentially. So here we can see there are passive effects, for example yield three beans and then multiply yield of beans by 1.1 and this is pretty much the same as having a multi-line effect block with an end at the end. So yeah, you can do it one way or the other, it doesn't really matter. Alright, let's now move on to types of effects. So there are a few built-in effect types which are triggered at different times and they are all listed in here. So we have the on start effect. Uh, this will trigger once when a new game is launched, such as when the player first opens the game or wipes their save. So this can be uh, pretty useful when, for example, you want to add a tutorial to your game. Now on save will trigger before the game saves or is exported, on load well, basically will trigger after the game is loaded, be it from opening the game, importing a save or manually, re manually reloading. On tick, uh, this is uh, an important one, will trigger every game tick, that is basically every second. Now uh, the handbook here says that you should use this for resource production by buildings but uh, you don't really need to limit yourself to just that. The on tick effect can be used to pretty much do all sorts of things every second so you don't only need to use it to produce resources. Now if the thing is a building this will only fire if its amount is at least zero and if the thing is an upgrade or an achievement this will only fire if you own it. So yeah you can also use the on tick effect on upgrades and achievements as well. So here we have an example, every second for example you, if you append this to a building it would yield you one apple. On click is also another pretty interesting effect. Uh, on click will basically trigger when the thing that the on click effect is appended to will be clicked. right? So you can use this for button and shiny effects but you can also use this for uh, buildings, achievements and uh, upgrades as well if you want to get funky with it. And many effects however such as passive boosts do not work in on-click effects and must be placed in passive effect blocks instead. So here we also have an example. So for example if you would put this on-click effect on a button it would grant you one apple each time you click that button. Now the passive effect is pretty interesting as well. This will trigger internally to grant various boosts and uh, 
Again, Handbook says that you should use this for upgrade effects, and while that's true, you can also use passive in buildings, achievements even. So, for example, you can have an achievement give you some passive buff. You can also have uh, resources give you passive buffs. Here we have some examples. So, for example, uh, you can have an upgrade grant you 10 of a resource, you can have an upgrade multiply the yield of some kind of button, or maybe multiply some cost, maybe multiply cost, uh, I mean yield of a building, etc. Basically all sorts of interesting things are possible with the passive effect. Now passive effect blocks and don't tick effect blocks are actually handled as the same block by the engine but are differentiated for clarity. Now on earn and on lose, are, these are pretty useful as well. On earn will trigger if the thing's amount is increased or, well, if it is an upgrade uh, or an achievement, if it is earned. And on lose is basically the inverse of that, will trigger if the thing's amount is decreased or if it is an upgrade or achievement, if it is lost. Okay, that should be all the built-in types of effects. We can move into custom effects. So, custom effects. You may also declare custom effects, which can be called from other effects. And this is extremely, extremely powerful because uh, you can nest these effects inside of each other up to a maximum of 10. And really there are infinite possibilities as to what kind of effects you can create. Now here we also can see C, do effect with thing selector. In short, basically what this means is here we can see that on the on click command you do explore with jungle land. And let's say, for instance, we have a building with the Thinky Jungle Land, right? And this is basically the Think Selector. So when you refer to a thing by its Thinky in code, that's called referring to it with a Thing Selector, basically. So basically, just selecting it. <coughs> now, an example of a custom effect here we can see, for example, on Explore, it would log you Explore. Um, well, and this basically this just means that it would give you the name of the thing that this custom effect is appended to and you would gain one lands explored and then you would trigger that with the on click effect where once you click it it would do explore with a thing with the thing key jungle land of course also important to mention effect names follow the same naming restrictions as Thing keys, only letters and numbers are allowed. Okay, so let's go a little bit more into detail as to how to actually trigger these custom effects. So, uh, in your code, you basically append it like a property, right? So, this triggers the specified custom effect for the thing. So, for example, you can do, it says here, do say hello, would have the current thing do its effect name named say hello. And do emote with tag animal would go through all things tagged animal and have them do their effect named emote. Now a bit more into tags in the future, but basically you can use tags to group certain things together. And uh, in the case of nested effects, the engine will stop applying effects if the nesting is more than 10 effects deep. So like I mentioned, uh, there is a 10 nesting limit basically. And also important to mention is that local variables do not reset when inside a triggered effect. And this allows us to do things like the following. Now, we haven't mentioned local variables yet. We will in the future. For now, you don't exactly need to know what this does. Just know that this is very powerful as well. Now, one more thing I should mention is uh, that these custom effects may seem a bit confusing, right? But that's why I urge you to experiment on your own and you know figure it out a little bit on your own because there are, there is quite a bit of nuance uh, in this. So. You will definitely be confused at first, but don't worry, once you gain some experience, uh, things will start to click together a lot better. Alright, phew, that should be it for this episode, quite a lot of information in this one. If you feel confused or maybe stuck, feel free to rewind the video or even ask any questions either in the comments or the Discord server or even the Reddit. I will try my best to answer every single one. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. In the next episode we will probably be talking a little bit about resources and hopefully add some functionality to our buildings and start producing coins. So if you also really like what I do here, feel free to subscribe to my Patreon. It will make me insanely happy. It has some pretty nice perks as well. All right, see you in the next one.